My mind thrives on challenges, trying new things and pushing the limits. So after the No Vitality Barbarian, I decided that it was time to try and see if I could do a No Vitality run with every class in the game. Second up, the Druid. The rules for this challenge are, I cannot put any stat points into Vitality. And them's the rules. The Druid starts off with a base of 25 Vitality and for this run it's staying that way. I do get some additional life during the playing. For every level up a Druid gets 1.5 hit points, 1 stamina and 2 mana. Druids also have some skills to gain more life but we will get into that later. For now we start the run and head into the Den of Evil where I use Firestorm to deal with corpse fire. I'm going to start this run off as a fire druid. I could give all sorts of fancy reasons as to why, but it's just a solid build that I really like playing, at least until the early part of Nightmare. Halfway through Nightmare it will fall off quite a bit though, but I'll deal with that when we get there. For my first few level ups I go ahead and farm Rakan issue. He is quite dangerous in the early game with his lightning bolts, but if you manage to survive, it is an amazing farming location this early on in the game. The first close call of the run comes in the Tamu Highlands, where a couple of skeleton mages manages to get my life total into the single digits. I found a couple of chip diamonds on the way, so I decide to buy a 3 socket shield from Geed and get some resistances going. From the counters I want a tear rune and a rel rune for a leaf and a tell and an eth for a stealth. A couple of tower runs later I end up reaching level 12. Fissure becomes available now. Fissure is the main reason I decided to go for a fire druid to start off the run. The text open volcanic vents below your enemies burning them to a crisp sounds vague. Are they big? Are they small? Well, Fissure opens up in a very respectable chunk of the screen and even more importantly the damage on it is amazing. As demonstrated here by the fire enchanted counters dropping like a pack of hot potatoes. The wolf head she ends up dropping is a plus 2 firestorm 9 lightning resist helmet which I will very happily use. A group of ghosts drops me a dead sash, an amazing find for it cannot be frozen, a melee character's wet dream. But I am a caster so I get to ignore half of the hard stuff in the game, meaning that you will never see this item on the screen in this video again. I also go ahead and buy a 2 socket star from Akara to use as a leaf base. A lot of people seem to think that the plus 3 to fire skills only works on the sorcerers, but that isn't the case, they work on every fire skill in the game. The 33 gold resist and 2 mana after each kill are a nice upgrade compared to the literal nothing I have going on as a weapon currently. It takes a couple of years running the counters, but I do end up finding my tall rune. I decide to keep on farming her even after finding it, cause at this point I found 3 rail runes, meaning that if I find a 4th one, I can use the Horadric cube that I will get in Act 2 to make an Ord rune, which would grant me access to an ancient splash in Act 2 normal, securing my resistances for the first difficulty. Once I hit level 17, I go ahead and make my stealth. The faster cast rate on this isn't very important for the fire druid. Most of his spells have a small delay in them, that won't get any faster no matter the amount of faster cast rate you have. But I like the 25 run walk, 30 poison resist and the 3 magic damage reduced just as much. A group of devilkin ends up dropping me a unique scimitar. Blood Crescent is one of my favorite uniques in the game, cause it's the first one I ever found. I remember fond days of being a 13 year old playing a zealot using this thing. These days however I still very much appreciate this item, not because I have the infinite patience of using a 3 to 9 damage sword cause those days are long gone, but because this is a one handed weapon that has 15 life and 15 resist all on it. In a run without vitality I couldn't have asked for better. Diablo 2 wouldn't be Diablo 2 if not after finding 3 rail runes. Before finding my first tail rune, I end up finding enough it and tail runes to cube a rail before I find the fourth of those. I swear this game just does it on purpose. The magic amulet the counters drops is also a cute little addition to my gear. 3 resist all and 10 faster cast rate. It's not much, but this early on in the run I'll gladly take it. At this point I just decided, I've done so much farming I might as well go all the way. So I go ahead and farm 3 tail runes to put in a hunter's bow for Floria. After all that farming I almost go ahead and lose the run to a couple of bone archers. Not gonna lie I would not have been happy if I had spent almost 2 hours farming the counters only to get killed straight after. At level 19 I switch to my leaf runeward. With its plus 3 to scales my fissure damage is honestly kind of nuts. 
I also go ahead and use my imbue. The resulting boots have half freeze duration, cold and fire resist. As I'm running through the catacombs level 3, a rare ring drops from one of the sarcophagus, netting me a ring with some more fire resist and some mana boosting mods. If you have never seen a fire druid take out Andario before, don't blink, cause you'll miss it. In the Claw Viper Temple a snake horn drops, which while very on theme for the Claw Viper Temple is already kind of lacking in power level at this point of the run. In the Maggot Lair my life total takes a bit of a tumble as I go ahead and clear everything up before grabbing the staff. After having picked up the cube I can use it to cube 3 Rao runes into an Ord rune, allowing me to create an ancient pledge. This shield is the golden standard of early game resistances, 43 gold and the rest at 48, what's not the love here? Thanks to the ABCs of Ancient's Pledge and Blood Crescent, my resistances are pretty much maxed out. So now the question becomes, do I use this setup because of the resistances? Or do I go and switch back to the Leaf for the plus 3 skills and damage? I decide that Turiel should know, so I go and ask him the question. Seeing how he is getting chunked something fierce by Fisher, I conclude that the damage from the plus 3 to skills isn't worth sacrificing over 60 resist all and over 10% of my total health pool. Duriel ends up dropping me an umbral disc, which has 20 life and would make me go from 130 to 150 life, but there is no way I'm giving up an Asian splash for that. Up until the spider cavern, this run hadn't felt very dangerous yet. However, my sense of dread is quickly alarmed when a random ass spider chunks away half of my life total in one hit. In Travancore, it's a race, but Floria does end up dying faster than the council. It was pretty close though. In the Durans level 2 I end up finding a set belt, at this point in the game this can only be a Hasaurus belt. An amazing find because it has 20 cold resist and 20 life, maxing out all my resistances and boosting my life total a big chunk. The Mephisto fight is usually pretty dangerous, but because I have max resist all, it's honestly kind of free. I do have to stay away from his arm though, it hits pretty hard after him being here alone for all that time. The chain mail he drops is a sparking mail, which gives lightning damage and lightning resist. Two Thorunes drop in the plains of despair, one at the entrance and one as a reward for waving at the souls. Because of that I really 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 want the Hellforce to drop me an Am rune, which it doesn't, it gives me a Rao rune. The Grand Vizier of Chaos is always fire immune, luckily Floria's triple Talpo doesn't care much about that, so once she starts targeting the correct enemy, down he goes. In the most ironic twist of fate I have ever seen, you can throw fissure over the pool of lava to make the enemies that live in literal hell's fire die to your fissure in seconds. Diablo starts the fight off with being a show off, so after convincing myself that it's okay my firestorm isn't as big as his and that it depends on how it's used, I go and surround him with fissure to make him walk himself to death, never showing him not even once how much bigger his firestorm is than mine. He ends up dropping me a giant sword and a great helm. The giant sword is Kidemal's Alpha, the plus 6 to holy fire sword I used on my holy fire zealot not that long ago. The great helm is Howl Tusk, a helm which causes monsters to flee and has knockback. Obviously this is intended for a Boazon, however it's great for Floria as well. The monsters come running in through the fissure and this will make them run away, forcing them through the fissure a second time. I go and deal with Shang before dropping a broadsword that is guaranteed to get 4 sockets from Lasso during the Eldritch farm. I am an Am rune away from getting my spirit online. Rare endless drop as well. These could be brown, they could be blue, they could be violet sky, they could be anything I like. Well they could be at least because they're crap. The game ends up dropping me another hint that it wants me to play more melee builds with a sharp Grand Charm of Life. It has 7 maximum damage, 75 attack rating and 14 life. 14 life is a 7% increase to my total health pool so I'm going to use it, but for all the wrong reasons. A 2 socket edge bow drops as well, allowing me to upgrade Floria's weapon to a Zephyr. The poison damage falls off hard at this point cause all the monsters are getting bigger health pools and are getting more poison resist, so getting to switch to a weapon that has 1 to 50 lightning damage couldn't have come at a better time. I've also maxed out Fissure now, so it is time to introduce you to a great friend of mine, Oak Sage. Oak Sage is a summon that gives a huge boost to your life pool. Even at the first level it grants you an additional 30% to your life total. And even though my life pool, unlike my firestorms, is small, 30% increase is just too much to ignore. Even at a base life pool of 200, this gets you 60 life. 
Which doesn't sound like a lot, but at level 20 it nets you 125% extra life. Literally more than doubling your life pool. And in a challenge like this, where every point counts, not maxing this out would be madness. The Eldritch farm continues and a soul rune drops. I want to combine this with an Orth rune, but I am currently out of those, so I go ahead and save the barbarians to get one as a reward. I don't make it just quite yet though, because I want to see Anya's reward before deciding on a helmet. If Anya ends up giving me a good helmet, I don't need to make a lore. In the Crystalline Passage, I am honored with the fabulous looking but very dangerous Blood Mana spell. These orange swirls look sweet and you don't see them very often because you can only get this cast on you when your life pool is lower than your mana pool. What it does is that it makes you spend life instead of mana on spells. The helm Anya gives me is flaming hot dog shit, so I charge her money for her own gift and spend that money at Farah. First thing I buy is a 3 socket armor. Bale can cast the blood mana spell as well, so I put some rubies in the armor for a big boost to my life total. The additional life this adds pushes my life total enough that it is now bigger than my mana pool, so I never have to risk the blood mana spell again. This however drops me below the required 21 dexterity for the blood crescent. Luckily the druid starts off with 20 dexterity, so I'll just put a point into dex on my next level up. Totally not having forgotten to put a stat point in dexterity. Me and my perfect life pool amount make it to the Ariad summit. I can pretend and lie my ass off that this was a very dangerous fight and all of that nonsense. But Fisher murdered them so much that they died trying to attack Floria and my Oak Sage while neither of them ended up with much more than a small scratch. Using the level up from the Ancients fight, I put a point into dexterity. So far this was the most dangerous moment of the run, because I almost muscle memoried my points into vitality, which would have failed me the run. Figuring dex would boost my block chance, I put the rest of the points into it as well. The skill points keep going into Oak Sage. I go bowling for the fire immune Colenso, but besides that, the bale waves went very smooth. Bale doesn't have fire storms, so I don't have to hide mine. And without much further ado, Floria goes down. Oh, and so does Bale. Don't worry though, we are going to keep on going. Nightmare and Hell Bale aren't exactly going to kill themselves after all. I'll show my gear, cause honestly, for just clearing out normal, my gear was insane. No single piece is absurd or anything, but all of them are very solid. That doesn't happen often. I'll find better stuff later on of course, but ending normal with a setup like this, I can't complain at all. With that, we move into Nightmare. Nightmare has a resistance drop of minus 40, meaning that your baseline resists are 40 lower than they are in normal. So let's see what we are working with here. Oh, they are still completely fine. Works for me. In Nightmare you can tell my damage is starting to fall off though. Things aren't just getting obliterated anymore in just one or two hits. It's fine for now though. In the Underground Passage a rare full plate mail drops. It has 26 life, 20 to cold resist and 23 to lightning resist. As far as rare armors go this thing is amazing. I personally don't want it, but Floria is going to love this when she hits 80 strength. Gambling at Geats nets me an upgrade to my boots. Nothing too special, but dual razors are better better than the just mf pair I was wearing. During the counters runs, I open up a chest and about 3 million rares pop out. One of them are endless. These turn out to be pretty good, with one to druid skills, faster hit recovery, a bit of life, cold and poison resist. Seems like I don't need to make a law for myself anymore. The countess drops me a shale rune, and in the very next run a devilkin drops me an M rune. Mere seconds later a 4 socket broadsword drops as well, so I don't have to use my laser quest to get one anymore. And are we going to go full Monty and get a 4 socket bill as well? Unfortunately, no, it's 3 sockets, but an M and a spirit base in 10 seconds, things are going well. I use my Tal, Thal, Oort and Amrune to make the spirit. It ends up rolling 29 faster cast rate. Thanks to my gear upgrades I can move things along. At level 42 Floria finally has 80 strength, so she gets the full plate mail I have been keeping onto for her. In the maggot lair I introduce a lot of bugs to a lot of fire. It goes exactly how you expect it would go. Radamant ends up dropping me a set ring, which is going to be either Cathans or Angelic. I'd prefer it to be an Angelic, cause that has 20 life on it. Unfortunately, it's a Cathans. In the Claw Viper Temple, one of the zombies drops a unique belt. Night Smoke looks pretty unassuming, but it has 10 resist all, which casually makes it a 40 resist belt. So I'm going to take it over the Hasaris belt. 
The Tyrael fight is the easiest thing ever. He targets the Oak Sage every single time, so I recast it every single time. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, one time I just kind of forgot to do it and almost lost the run over it. But besides that little tidbit, everything went well and I took down Duriel. While leaving the Great Marsh, I found an amulet with 11 resist to all, which I equip. The rare ring almost gives me does me no good either. The lore I give to Floria, however, does her some serious good. With its plus to skill, 30 lightning resist and 7 damage reduction, it's a good helm for her. The big problem with this build is starting to show itself more and more at this point, with fire immunes coming out of the woodwork around every corner. Floria can deal with them for now, but I am going to need a more permanent solution for Act 4 and further along in the game. I go to Alcor to buy some stamina pots, but the old man turns out to be quite the creeper, locking me in his house without a way to leave. Not the first time a stranger locks me in their house, but the first time it happened in the game. So the first save and quit in this run is to Alcor. Good times. The difference in power level between the council on normal and the council in nightmare couldn't be more obvious, where in normal they died in seconds, this time around they are tanking my hits no problem. Gallop Flamefinger is even getting out healed the damage dealt to him. I go and take down the council member that is healing him, before finishing the job with Gallop and getting the flail. Even though I have the flail, I still have to make my way through the rest of them. Luckily, none of them are as big of a problem as Gallop was. But this is a sign that I need to spec out of the fire build very soon. I haven't done it yet, but that is because my respec involves Hurricane, which would blow up the dolls in the Durant. Instead, I can now just lure them into the fissure and be done with them. The Mephisto fight is rough, my damage just isn't really good enough anymore. At this point, the fire damage build has fully fallen off. I fight him for a while, but decide to give Charcy a visit to see if my imbue can help me out a bit. The reward is just a straight up jackpot, with plus 3 to tornado, 2 to summon grizzly, 26 life, 12 cold and 10 fire resist. That seals the deal, I am going to respec right away. Stat wise I'm going 70 strength so I can wear a 4 socket gothic plate if the need ever arises. Dexterity for some block and the rest into energy for some mana. Skill wise I max out tornado and put as many points as I can into hurricane. Next up I put a bunch of points into oak sage and the leftover points I use to spec into the summon grizzly. My new helm gives me a plus 2 bonus to the bear but he can never be too tanky. With my new abilities I get back into the mephisto fight. I have to be careful that he doesn't kill my oak sage. And even though my damage isn't great yet, because I haven't pumped the synergies for Tornado yet, down he goes. The Hellforge drops me a Lum Rune. The Diablo fight is a bit risky and I know it looks insane to just stand there and still next to him, but at this range he can't hit me with his lightning. Ahem, <clears throat> I said he cannot hit me with his lightning. Well, someone obviously didn't get that memo. Luckily, my resists are solid and I'm able to tank it. Him punching me ends up hurting much more, which is surprising, but fair. Those aren't exactly small fists after all. A pile of rejuvenation potions later, Diablo goes down and to act 5, I go. On the area plateau, I decide that running into fanaticism monsters while having a curse on me might not be the greatest of ideas and could easily get me killed. I got off lucky, losing only half my life, but if that was a crit, that was it. The close calls are coming in fast now. In the frozen river, my life total plummets below half in an instant yet again due to some skeletal mages. Pressing an evil urn for the memes ends up spawning a boss pack of souls right in front of me. Those remind me of my mortality once again. It's a good thing my resistances are good, this could easily have ended the run as well. Fortunately, they are focusing on everything, everywhere, all at once. Between Floria, my bear, my oak sage and me, their lightning beams just aren't focused enough and we win the fight. Anya rewards me saving her with a plus 2 tornado helm with cold and poison resist. If my helm wasn't already very good, this would have been solid for sure, but it's not beating out our 3 nato dual res life helm anytime soon. In the ancient's way, I am greeted by cursed hell lords. They waste no time and almost send me to meet my deed screen. Luckily, the bear ends up buying me a few seconds to get the hell out of there, cause this would have ended very poorly if I'd hadn't. I drink from a well to get rid of the curse and stay far enough away that I don't get cursed by the bear getting hit. Having made sure I'm safe, I start firing away at them. 
Barely surviving that fight, I turn the corner and it's time for round 2. Another group of angry minotaurs are coming straight at us, breaking through every single tank and defense in a matter of seconds. Good thing I can recast the bear and oak sage as often as I'd like, cause they had my number for sure. My gambling addiction overtakes me yet again. This time I get dual leech resistance gloves. The game is very obviously still trying to tell me I should play more melee builds, but I'll take the 26 gold and 27 lighting resist nonetheless. Lister ends up dropping me a unique ring. I'm sure it must be the unidied stone of Jordan I traded for earlier. I ID my stone of Jordan only to see that Lister frauded me with a 16 magic find Nagel. Maybe I shouldn't have destroyed him, could have used the receipt to trade the ring back in for something better. Oh well, can't change what's done. Bale ends up behaving perfectly, unfortunately he doesn't drop anything too useful. The cultic sword he dropped is a cloud crack. It's a weird paladin aura based two handed sword themed around lightning. The design of this is very cool, I just wish they had put it on a one handed weapon instead. Could you imagine, instead of being a cultic sword it being a seraph rod instead? Would have been so sick. With nightmare being done, it is time for the hell preparation. It starts off with some leveling in the terror zones, followed up by some more gambling, this time for belts. I end up getting a 17 faster hit recovery, 24 cold resist and 23 lightning resist bladed belt, which is an easy upgrade from night smoke. Nightmare terror zones are cute and all, but nothing beats players 8 pindle runs for easy leveling in nightmare. On one of my runs a 4 socket back the Cobra ends up dropping, which I will be using later. The countess ends up dropping me the runes I need to go and make an inside. The inside rune word is wildly overpowered, which is why I'm going for it every single run. For the mere price of a soul rune, you get practically infinite mana in the form of the mana regenerating aura meditation. It also has a ton of enhanced damage and attack rating that will both help an act to mercenary along nicely. I'm just left wondering one thing now though. Inside has 35% faster cast rate, 5 to all stats and magic find. Is there a two handed caster build out there that wants this? After pondering those hard hitting questions, Floria announces her retirement and we introduce Kasim into our group of adventurers. His holy freeze aura will help out in hell by slowing things down. I also go ahead and give him the rare full play mail and the lore Floria was wearing. I casually ignore a set reinforced maze cause a video about that is coming soon and start talking about the unique tomb wand Rakanishu drops me. It's the arm of King Leoric, one of the most swag plus the skill items in the game, plus 2 summoning, plus 2 poison and bone skills, faster cast rate and plus 2 skeletal mages and terror and even plus 3 to raise skeleton and skeleton mastery. This thing is a build guide on a stick, it can't get much more on the nose than that design wise, but damn if it isn't cool. I hung out in the terror zones until I was able to max out cyclone armor, which is a skill that shields you from fire, cold and lightning damage. Thanks to the plus skills on spirit, I have it at level 22. It absorbs 925 damage from sad elements, meaning that we have an additional 925 life that we can quickly recast against those elements. I also saw a studded ladder of the whale in Charzi's inventory, which is just an upgrade from the triple ruby armor I was wearing. After maxing cyclone armor, I decided to get back into the terror zones to farm some more level. I can use the skill points that this gets me to pump up the tornado damage by putting them into its synergies. In the stony field, I find a second lum rune. One thing I realized is that if I can buy a leather armor of the whale, I can also buy a jeweler's leather armor of the whale, meaning that I should be able to get an armor that has 4 sockets and up to 100 life. I decide to go and shop at Lazik to see what I can find. I don't expect to find a 4 socket 100 life armor, cause those are pretty damn rare. But even something like a 3 socket 50 or 60 life armor would be an amazing upgrade. It ends up taking me just 2 trips to Lazik to find an item that I will hate until the day I die. He ends up offering me a jeweler's field plate of the squid. This would be the kind of role sweet dreams are made of, but I am going to disagree cause a field plate can have more than 2 sockets. This is such a rare role and I end up getting it in one of the worst armors to get it in. Seriously, this item just pisses me off. It's still an upgrade though, so I bought it. During the shopping I also search for a belt. Belts can roll with sockets, so I only need to look for the of the whale mod. 
I end up finding one that has a bit of gold resist on there to complement the life as well. This russet russet armor of the whale made me laugh. I went ahead and wasted a pile of gold on an ancient armor of the whale, cause seconds later I noticed an ochre plate mail of the whale as well. 100 life and 16 lightning resist, don't mind if I do. I decided to give this one some sockets the old fashioned way by giving it to Lazak because it's a blue item it can roll either one or two sockets so let's hope we get two. Unfortunately it rolls only one so I decide to put a perfect ruby in there. Because I ended up finding my spirit base in the tower, I didn't need to use my normal socket quest on a spirit base. So I get to use that to put a socket into my helmet instead. Rare helms only get one socket no matter what you do. I decide to use that socket by putting an additional perfect ruby in there for another 38 life. And with all that prep done, it is time to enter hell. A group of fallen ends up dropping me Sargon's boots, which I decide to use over the rares I was using. I have a ton of lightning resist from all the other items and poison resist just doesn't matter that much, you can just buy antidotes. After equipping my new Sargon boots, this is what my resistances are looking like. 48 fire, maxed out cold and 59 lightning resist. Not too shabby at all. The poison rest could be better, but hey, like I said, antidotes exist. In the stony field, things get way too close for comfort with a group of foul crows. If I hadn't been wearing all that plus life gear, that would have been it. After saving Kane, Akara gives me a ring with 22 cold resist and 11 lightning resist. It's actually a pretty good ring, but my cold resist is already maxed out and my lightning resist is the next highest, so I decide not to use it. You can tell my fire resist isn't as good as the golden lightning when in the jail level 1 I almost get burned to a crisp by a group of skeletal mages. I throw the bear in there as a tank and move towards safety, finding a pair of mage fists along the way. I would have loved to find those while I was still a fire druid cause they are the actual best in slot item for that build. While the tornadoes deal physical damage, the hurricane deals cold damage, so dealing with ghosts in the jail is just a matter of waiting around until they die. In the catacombs I end up finding a gothic shield with 3 sockets, a gothic shield has 4% more base block than a large shield, meaning that it is a free upgrade. So for the mere price of 240 decks I now have 56% chance to block. After looking at my resistances again, my nerves got the better of me so I decided to switch back to the resistance gloves. Antario ends up getting stuck in the door, which sounds good until you realize my tornadoes don't go towards the door no matter what I do. Instead, they fly off to the left. It ends up with me standing straight in front of her, ignoring all safety and just going for a damage trade. I'm just happy I brought enough full rejuvenations and antidotes, cause Antariel is making mince meat out of my life total with her poison damage. A grey treasure drops in the rocky waste, please let it be 4 or 5 sockets. 4 would get Kasim an upgraded insight and 5 would get him an honor. The treasure ends up being 5 sockets, meaning I get to give Kasim an honor. The maggot lair isn't too bad on a wind druid, the hurricane's AoE works just fine and the nados can miss if you have to get in the face of everything anyway. So the entire thing is just a matter of killing every single monster. Tedious, but no biggie. I can also toss the bear up ahead to allow him to tank when things get a bit too much. So while the maggot lair is the most densely populated place on the planet, it's just a matter of time before I can make my way to the claw viper temple. Some rare endless drop, I'm sure this is my unideated 5 nado, 2 socket, quad res, 80 life helm with 24 faster hit recovery. I also ordered earlier. I mean, it tried, but that's definitely not better than what I'm wearing. The arcane sanctuary turns out to be a big coffee break. I go and grab a refill while the hurricane deals with the specters. Thanks to good resistances and a decent chance to block, I am able to tank Duriel head on. Unfortunately, it puts me into hit recovery, but once I take a few steps back and his focus diverts to my tanks, it's just a matter of time before the demon takes his dive. He ends up dropping me a long sword, which is hell plague. So far I have found a ton of items for the fire druid and melee characters. I think the game is trying to tell me I should play a melee fire build. Not a lot of those going around though. 
I tell Ormus that he should really keep a better eye on his kitchen utensils. The ring he gives me as a reward shows his appreciation for my advice better than words ever could. The Flayer Dungeon Level 2 is filled to the brim with dolls. It's a good thing the bear fills up the entire corridor on his own, allowing me to work on their life total from a distance. After the Flayer Dungeon, I go and risk my life against Alcor again for some stamina potions, cause you get stamina from Vitality, which I am not putting any points in, meaning I don't get to have stamina. In the game, at least, I totally have stamina outside of the game. Come on now guys, we all know this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Even in Hell Act 3, my stamina is behaving the same way as it did in Normal Act 1. Fun times. I manage to escape the old man and head towards the spider cavern, where thanks to the poison the spiders inflict, life comes at me fast. No vitality and low poison resist is a recipe for disaster in a place like this. The Zark's attempt at warming me up with some amp damage curse over my head doesn't make me feel much more welcome either. The final acts of hell are where the game stops moseying about and starts really trying to fuck with you. In the upper Koras, my life total plummets the second some faithful and friends get on the screen. They even end up making short work of the bear, a sure sign that I need to not be close to them anytime soon. The console isn't too bad, they do some annoying heal spamming, but mostly get put into hit recovery by the bear and don't end up putting much of a fight. Chests and racks are amazing. In the Durans they drop me a lamb rune and a white Shaco, meaning that I have a consistent Shaco rack. If I was inclined to do it, this would be perfect for farming a Shaco, cause the drop odds for uniques of racks are much better than if you farm them from monsters. I thought I was safe from dolls in this Durans, but they ambush me around the corner, forcing me to hide behind my bear, who once again saves my life. Seriously, this run would not have been possible without the bear. Knowing that there are dolls, I decide to go back to town to turn off my hurricane and move along through the rest of the Durans without it. I turn it off because I don't want the hurricane to randomly kill them, cause my name isn't Battery and today is not a fine day to die by random doll explosions. They almost get me again on level 2. This time it ends up being Kasim who saves my butt after I explain to him where the doll tried to touch me. There are some close calls against Mephisto, but as long as my Oak Sage is alive, he doesn't deal enough damage to end the run. I check my lightning resist before entering the Plains of Despair and enter with a non-zero amount of nerves. Once on the Plains, I see Corpulent, Doom Knight and the Flash Spawner. Which means, there can't be any souls and the area is free. Or at least so I thought, cause getting out of there turns out to be quite the fight. The stairs are being camped hard and the unique corpulent is just not getting the hint. I end up running back and luring them out one by one. A group of flash spawners doesn't agree with my strategy and rolls up to me like they are in charge or something. To deal with this I run back even further and start pulling them away until I clear everything but the two unique monsters. Two physical immunes, with one of them being cold immune as well. So much for the free area. This is a mess. Before they follow me and start running towards the city of the damned, I decide to just hope that the stairs are empty enough for me to make it through before they follow me and start running towards the city of the damned. The entrance turns out to be practically empty, and I gladly leave this free area behind me. And who is the cutest little bear? Yes you are, you are the cutest little bear. What's that hey Fasto? You getting ragdolled? Ah, oh, he's so cute though, he doesn't bite, no he doesn't. Don't mind how greedy I am after grabbing the hammer by the way. Who needs to clear things out for safety these days? Not gonna lie though, I would not have been a happy camper if I had died right here. I make my way out and clear the rest before retrying things with the Hellforge. It ends up giving me a Paul rune, which doesn't really do anything for me. Even the most casual moments end up costing me half my life. It's a good thing we are nearing the end, cause my sense of safety is gone with the wind at this point. Everything feels dangerous. A monarch drops from a Venom Lord. And oh look at that, it's so cute, our bear has found a new little ragdoll. What's that lord the size, you getting ragdolled again? It's okay, he's so cute, it's the cutest of cute boys. The Venom Lords do beat our pair, but as long as I can recast him and split up the lords a bit, everything goes fine and dandy. It takes a few trips to town, but the Venom Lords go down. Time for Diablo, the demon the game is named after, on the highest difficulty. 
this is going to be a fight for the ages. Except it isn't. You can just walk up to him, stand still and throw stuff at him. As long as you stay out of the fire, it's the easiest boss fight in the game. Seriously, who dies to Diablo in hell? Seriously, you've gotta be such a noob at that. You know, you just gotta be a noob. The claymore he drops is Soul Flay. It's a sword that keeps reminding me of the band Soul Fly. Has some dual leads and some resistances, but it's very obviously aimed at the early game. The quill rats in the bloody foothills are way too dangerous. I'm not gonna muck about with them, so a reroll it is. Having made my way to Shank, I go and tell him what's what so Lazar can go and socket my monarch. I make the spirit room with in the monarch, netting me yet another plus 2 to my skills, 35 faster cast rate, 22 extra vitality, 101 mana, but it is a drop on resistances. The monarch requires 156 strength, so I give Akara a call about respecking and put them in there. The rest of my stats go into dexterity, netting me a very respectable 269 dexterity, getting me 69% chance to block. Nice. The double spirits give me 44 vitality. My base is 25, granting me a total of 69 vitality. Nice again. Skill wise, I stick with what has been working. I max the Oak Sage again, put a few points into the bear, max Hurricane and Tornado. I follow that up by maxing out Cyclone Armor and the final point goes into one of the synergies. It doesn't really matter which one. To compensate my resistance drop from using spirit over ancient splash, I buy a couple of armors and make two smokes in them. One for me and one for the mercenary. Smoke has a bunch of mods I can't remember and gives 50 resist all, which is nuts. It could have a bunch of downsides for all I care, 50 resist all for a lum rune, sign me right up. The difference in resist after switching armor comes at a cost though. My life total is much lower again, but between the Oak Sage and Cyclone armor, all I need to do is hold on for one more act. At this point it is just a mad dash towards the end while hoping to survive. In the glacial trail I notice that my life total is lead. I've now hit all the funny numbers in this run, surely that's a good sign. The pit vipers don't like being called Shirley, so they blast at my face. Good thing they have the attention span of a well, me, cause they get distracted by Kasim and the bear which cost them the fight. If they had just focused on me, it all would have looked very differently. I do the usual shtick against the ancients by splitting them up. Talik could whirlwind into me at any time and kill me, but this far into a run like this, you've just gotta accept the risk and roll with it. He goes for it a couple of times, but he never hits me dead on. The other two go down much easier, they can't even beat the bear or Kasim, let alone both of them. So while they think, I throw damage and that's that, easy peasy lemon squeezy. The Wildstorm keep level 3 turned out to be one big bullet hell, but after some running around, dodging some stuff, I managed to make it out. The Unravelers in the second bale wave end up turning my life total into a yo-yo thanks to their infinity and beyond amount of poison damage, but besides that little tidbit, the bale waves went fine. The third group even dropped an Elder's Jagged Star. This can roll either 2 or 3 sockets, turns out it rolled 3. Seems like a sign to record an Elder run if I've ever seen one. I'd like to talk about how hard the bill fight was, but look at this, he's behaving so well I almost just want to give him a cookie. He spawns some festering appendages a few times, but mostly just sits there and doesn't do much of anything? Towards the end, the tornadoes get drunk in celebration a bit too early, but it doesn't matter anymore. As long as I don't screw up, I can't lose this anymore. My man, what are you doing? Get away from the clone, you are at 600 life, fucking get out of there! After that little moment of greed, I go back in and win the fight, clearing the run. And there you have it, the no vitality, hell, hardcore druid, solo cell found, completed. While my stats, skills, gears and charms are showing up on the screen, I want to give a big thank you to everyone that's still here watching. If you liked the content, please consider subscribing or becoming a member of the channel. For now, I'm getting out of here, so see you all in the next one.